Hi, everyone. My name is Bjorn, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Lendors. We're solving one of the most important problems of our time. We have a massive demographic problem in Europe, which leads to a labor shortage. And at the same time, there's millions of students in developing and emerging countries who would like to study and work in Europe, but they can't afford to. This is a problem which Lendors is solving. There's a strong team behind it. Uh, myself, I'm co-founder and, co uh, co and CEO. I have a background from McKinsey. I worked afterwards in uh, Velvon, a neobank, as a C CPO. And then I worked in uh, Knusper, a German unicorn, as a COO, leading a team of 800 people. My co-founder, Evgeny, actually has a very similar background than many of the students we support, originally coming from St. Petersburg, and then through the studying, coming to Europe, but having a hard time financially uh, throughout. And he's an expert in underwriting. We have Hannah, who is a banker, and a whole team of uh, experts in underwriting, in data science, and uh, lawyers. How exactly do we solve the problem? So the students who come, we score them using a forward-looking scoring method, where banks typically are looking backward. What's your credit score? What's your past history? We're looking into the future, into the opportunity and the potential of a student. After scoring them, we provide them with money to study uh, for the tuition fee and the cost of living. And beyond the money, we also help them get settled. It starts with the first current account, the health insurance, all the way to the summer internship and ultimately the graduate job. In return, the students are repaying a percentage of what they earn after they graduate. And over time, we're building this out into a financial and career ecosystem for high-skilled immigrants, where it's not just about the student financing, which is a start, but also about tools to help the students get into a job, connections to employers, and everything uh, more. There's three sources of revenue. There's an upfront origination fee, where there's 10% of the amount which the student takes out, which we add upfront as an origination fee, helping us with the cash flow. Then there's a delta between the repayments from the students and our cost of capital. And lastly, there are the ecosystem revenues, which are growing over time as we add more and more. This is uh, from employers, this is commissions from financial institutions and so on. The market is pretty big already now. So if we look at a narrow market of STEM masters and quantitative masters in Europe, we have uh, almost 300,000 students in Europe right now, making for a 2.8 billion uh, revenue pool. And this is growing at 7% per year. So it's a, str a strongly growing market. We have three uh, differentiators. Firstly, we have the data and algorithm mode. We're collecting more than 150 data points for each student for the scoring. And the more students we score, the more we learn about them, the more accurate we will get in the future. And this will be very, very hard to, to capture. Second is a network effect, uh, where the more students we have, the more relevant it is for employers and vice versa. And lastly, on the sourcing side, we have partnerships with uh, universities, University of St. Gallen, Stockholm School of Economics, and various others, and also with blocked account providers like Expatrio, which allows us to have a low customer acquisition cost, 150 to 200 euros per student. Uh, in terms of traction, we have processed more than 1,500 applications to date. We have uh, raised about 600k of uh, equity in pre-seed from Techstars, from uh, Vialo Ventures, a small ticket from Early Bird Vision Lab. And um, we recently closed a 10 million line of credit, uh, so 10 million euros um, a line of credit, which is secured through a guarantee by the European Investment Fund. Otherwise, um, uh, it would have been tricky, but the EIF secures the defaults. And with this money, as said in the introduction, we're going to support more than 1,000 additional students, in addition to the ones we already did in the past. And over the next five years, it will be tens of thousands of students which are able to study in Europe who otherwise wouldn't have been able. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for the great pitch. <laughs> super. With the Q&A. Yeah, super, super important product and great timing and so forth. Uh, really, really cool stuff. I guess uh, your growth is a bit limited by the existing number of students who are already pre-qualified and studying in Europe, if I understand correctly. Is there an opportunity to also scale beyond just the existing students? And maybe a follow-up question as well. Uh, yeah, how do you how do you then ensure that these these uh, loans get repaid? Is it through the, the actual employers that you intro to, or or how do you see that going? Let me get to both of them. Thanks a lot. Um, so firstly, the uh, students we have on the one hand side, the students who are already kind of in Europe or on the way to Europe. About 25% of them are having financial difficulties, like my co-founder, and they're trying to fix it somehow with the side jobs or somehow making it happen, but they're having a hard time. This is the pool of students who are already here. 
Of course, there's millions more who don't even think they can make it, who are still physically in Kyrgyzstan or Bolivia or Bangladesh or somewhere, and they, who don't even think they can make it. Uh, this is stage two on a cash flow point of view. If they're yet not even in Europe, it will be at least two years before they get there, probably three, four years. So it's a bit trickier to get to them. So we're starting with the easier to address ones which are already on the way. But the second step is exactly the, the ones which are not even yet thinking about it. And the second question was about um, how we get uh, the repayments done, like how we ensure that the money gets repaid. There's two answers to this. There's a carrot and a stick, if you want. The carrot part is uh, we're helping them on the journey to find a job. So we're really kind of all the way to uh, helping them to fix the CV through our tools to employer introductions. And if you have been introduced to the employer from us, it's very awkward to uh, stop repaying. This is the carrot. The stick is we have enforceable contracts. It's um, an income share agreement contract following the regular standards. And um, if someone who is earning a good income refuses to repay the percentage of the income which they are due to repay, it's a litigation essentially. Can you um, talk a bit about the underwriting logic? So how do you assess the credibility of one specific person and how does that change over time the more students you have onboarded to lenders? Yeah, of course. Uh, this is um, uh, one of the key, key pillars. So underwriting logic, we look into different areas. First, we have a credit box, which means um, we only take students from developing and emerging countries. We only currently do master students. We also have only a certain degrees currently, which we do, which is particularly the STEM degrees and the kind of quantitative finance business type of degrees. Uh, this already helps de-risk the future employability uh, quite a lot. And then on the individual side, we're collecting a lot more information from what bachelor did they do, what grades did they have, if they already have done, for example, the first one or two semesters in the master, how many ECTS, what grades, and all of this flows into this, as well as internships, past work experience, and various other data points. And also, quite importantly, motivation. We have an interview uh, with all of them, a digital interview, where we are asking them about the motivation. This also flows into this. And over time, we are seeing which of those are actual predictors of the future behavior. We already have a model now, but with each cohort of students, it's getting more accurate. And quick follow-up, what default rate are you expecting? So default rate is, um, for domestic students, it's in the low percentages, 2 3%. For international students, we're projecting 8 to 12%. It's roughly our projected default rate. Up to 20% of default rate were fully covered by the European Investment Fund. How do you make sure that the students don't get kicked out by stupid immigration laws uh, in, in countries in Europe uh, before they get a job? Yeah, this is a good one. So our first target market is Germany. In Germany, you have 18 months between your graduation and finding a job. Finland is like three now or something ridiculous. This is one also for our expansion roadmap, one which we really are looking at. What is a kind of after graduation timeline? But the more kind of um, STEMI and the more in demand the field is, the easier it's also to find a job. So if we're getting some of the students, they already have a signed contract before they even graduate. This is a, a kind of minus, minus one month. All right. Thanks a lot. Aaron. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.